Hello, my name is Anna Colin. I am the co-founder of Open School East in Margate in the UK and the current director. So first I'd like to thank um, Tomasz Vanek and Vita Vranek for their invitation to take part um, in this collective reflection on the future and the present of art education. Um, in 2013, we co-founded Open School East in London, and in 2017, we moved the organization to Margate, uh, which is a seaside town in the southeast of England. We define Open School East as a free, independent art school and as a community space that focuses on collective learning through the arts. Free is important in the UK, where a single year in higher education costs uh, an English or European student £9,000 a year, which equates to about €10,000 a year. And for an overseas student, it costs about €30,000 a year. And the term independent, which we also use to define the school, relates to the fact that we are not affiliated to any particular university, academy or institute, although we have collaborated with many of them in the past. Um, Open Schoolist runs a variety of programmes. The first one we created in 2013 is what we call the Associates Programme. It's a year long, uh, it's a development programme which is studio and tuition based. It is non-accredited and it welcomes a group of about 13 artists every year from various disciplines. Some of them have undergone formal training and others haven't got prior qualifications. Some of them have been to art school before and some of them have come from, say, communication design, textile, theatre, set design, dance, anthropology, etc. The way it works is that the associates apply and they are selected according to a range of criteria, which includes um, quality of ideas and forms, a recognised need to access free and informal education, an interest in being part of a group of people with different practices and experiences, a willingness to work um, in collaboration as well as individually, to be self-directed and to interact with members of the public at different moments. So we'll go back to this program um, more shortly in detail because it's the one that uh, is most relevant to this symposium. But I really want to introduce the rest of the organization as no program functions fully independently from the other. And Open School East is not just a typical small-scale art school, it's an organism, uh, one that is inhabited and participated by a wide range of learners and users from various generations and walks of life. And they come to the school whether to learn, to skill share, to develop their practice, to gain qualifications, build their confidence, socialize or even debate with others. So, as I said, the Associates Programme is our first programme. The second main programme is what we call the Young Associates Programme, and it was started in 2019. It was in the making for about two, three years. And it's an art and design programme, complete with functional skills in English and math, which replaces the last two years of school for young people aged 16 to 18. These are people who have been failed by mainstream education, who did not fit in for all sorts of reasons and have slipped through the net. Unlike the first program, this one is accredited and it allows the young people to re-engage with their education and to go to university after equipped with qualifications, if they desire to do so, of course. Um, this program, like the first one, is led by a group of international artists, as well as architects, textile, graphic and fashion designers who work in conjunction, in this case, with qualified teachers. The third programme we run is um, a weekly art school for children aged 5 to 11 who lack opportunities to engage in culture and art making due to limited or absent provision in their school, um, but also due to socioeconomic disadvantage, i.e. not having access to after-school clubs or uh, paid opportunities uh, to learn how uh, to make art um, and yeah any other factors that would exclude them from civic life essentially and at this stage I think it's important to say that the town we work in Margate is marked by significant social and economic deprivation with high levels of poverty and unemployment and low educational attainment so part of our programs especially with children and young people have been developed in direct response to the local situation and to the needs surrounding education and social inclusion. 
Our final program, which we simply call the public program, opens the school out to members of the public from the local area as well as from further afield. It includes um, skills-based workshops led by artists who are often invited at the initiative of those who undertake the associates program. It also includes cultural theory seminars um, uh, that we host in collaboration with research groups and academic institutes. At the moment, we are collaborating with the Center for Critical Thought at the University of Kent in Canterbury, which is half an hour from Margate. We also organize as part of our public program, um, medium and long-term participatory art projects, which are led uh, variously by international artists as well as artists from the region. And these projects place the development of creative skills at the center and it engages or they engage participation from groups that are often excluded from cultural life, including senior citizens or people with learning disabilities. These projects, like many of our programs, make use of art as a pedagogical tool, a vehicle for cross-community encounters, for skills development, for confidence building. So this is a broad introduction to what Open Schoolist is. And in a nutshell, it's an alternative art school and a locally responsive cultural and learning facility, which is run informally and according to principles of collaboration, co-production, responsiveness and openness. Now I want to respond to some of the questions that were posed in the original invitation. Open School is, unlike many but not all of the institutions and schools which have been invited as part of this symposium, is a very young uh, and independent institution which sits partly outside of the education sector and for that reason, it has been able to model its pedagogical methods as it intended, rather than in compliance with a set of more rigid criteria. Open Schoolies was primarily set up in response to the crisis faced by art education in England. So we have seen that fees are really high. Um, so is the student debt, which makes um, art education and its promises of a rather precarious future increasingly inaccessible to those who are less advantaged from a socio-economic perspective. The other factor that we observed is that um, the, critical residence, resist, sorry, the critical resistance space that universities and art school had once been has been rather briskly repressed by the marketization of education. Finally, London's art schools, and I just want to remind you that we were started in London originally, London art schools have become increasingly connected to the art market, which has had the dual effect of discouraging social practice and its largely process rather than product-oriented approach. And it's also had the effect of generating competition for attention from the private gallery sector between students. So Open School is started with the reformist agenda and embraced from the outset um, alternative education principles, which um, in a nutshell reside in collective, democratic, um, non-competitive learning, self-direction, agency and implication of learners in decision-making processes, critical thinking, and last but not least, a situated approach which places learners in situations that directly connect to their experiences and strive to give these experiences visibility. So this last aspect is something that relates more to the work that we do with the young people. I won't have so much the opportunity to touch on it in the short space we have been given. In the UK, many art schools are still very much run according to disciplinary categorizations. For example, a student in sculpture will often be discouraged to engage with performance and a painting student will be expected to largely stick to this medium. The independent setup of Open School East has allowed for a much more open approach where we make no distinction between disciplines, where crucially the artists who undertake the Associates program are entirely in charge of programming the second and the third terms of their education and to invite anyone that inspires them. So we give them a budget, we give them guidelines, and we give them carte blanche. And they might be inviting an artist, 
a fiction writer, a philosopher, an urbanist, a housing activist, a landscape designer, whatever they see fit really for their learning and for what they might want to um, come across with um, culturally and artistically uh, or beyond. The first term is programmed by the team who invites every year a different artist uh, or in the large sense of the term really uh, to develop a curriculum which leads to the development of a collaborative project between the associates and the guest artists. So for example next year we will be working with Assemble, the architecture collective, um, around the idea of care and maintenance, um, stewardship and sustainability. So um, Assemble's curriculum will question how we can begin to participate in an ongoing caring relationship with the artists with whom we share the space today, but also those that will follow tomorrow. The curriculum will engage testing changes to the material fabric of the building that we have recently moved into to observe how a culture of repair inscribes the social and political culture at the centre of a school which is built on relationships rather than objects. So throughout the year, the associates are also guided by a faculty of mentors, um, artists, again, you know, broadly speaking, curators, theorists, whom we invite to work with the school on a yearly basis to accompany the associates in their practice, um, in the work, in the production of work and projects that they realize, um, sometimes individually, sometimes collaboratively, and which will end up being showcased up as part of um, a studio, an open studio, uh, halfway through the year and as part of an end of the year exhibition. So the Associates Programme establishes that there should be a mixture of skills-based activities, for instance, workshops and short courses, which are not just aimed at the Associates, but also members of the public, so that more people can benefit from this education. And in the past, these courses have been geared towards analog film, practice, um, ceramics, coding, animation, to name just a few. And on the other hand, we have theory-based activities, for example, seminars and reading groups, again, some of which, and sometimes all of them, are open to the public. So, so that there's more participation to this, you know, access and, you know, more participation and access to this education, but also the um, interest is in opening up a dialogue, opening up a school, um, and, um, you know, also enabling a confrontation with um civil society with, you know, other people who come to school for different reasons. So as such, there's no particular instruction that the school emphasizes on. Uh, and that's in response to one of the questions that was asked uh, in the original brief for this symposium. So we could say, even though I will argue it's not that easy, um, that Open Schoolist Associates Programme may be one possible model of what art education could look like in future should formal art education undergo widespread reform. And I'm talking really in the UK context because it's very specific. So the Associates Programme and Open Schoolist, you know, in comparison with, say, an MA Programme, uh, is arguably more inclusive, more interdisciplinary, more public oriented, which has the effect of placing artists in the real world and outside the confines of the art school. And the associates are named associates rather than students because they, co they are co-producers of their program and also they are decision makers, not just at the level of programming part of their education, but also at organizational level. So, for example, we meet weekly with the associates and staff uh, to review teaching and mentoring sessions, um, but we also discuss, or it's really a platform for the associates to discuss, for instance, who the associates-led public program is for, how open schoolies could make itself more visible to the outside, how it should respond to subjects like Black Lives Matter and other such organizational topics that would normally not involve the students. And the agenda is set by the associates who, for many but not all, and this without any request or expectation from the staff, see their role at OSC or open schoolies as we call it short, and as so they see their role at Open School is as beyond learning and sharing their learning with others, but also they actively seek to reform their program 
and by proxy the organization. And not so much at the request of the associates, but um, after a few years of observing um, and hearing the associates asking to be made privy to how the organization works at management level, at senior level, at board level, you know, what is the funding and the financial structure? These were questions that we asked a lot in the first year and made really public. And then after the second year, we tried to shield the associates from that set of interrogations. But uh, many of them have asked to be yeah, made private to this conversation. So since 2016, we invite um, one associate to sit at each quarterly board meeting with the trustees and the staff to observe um, and to participate, um, to gain insight into the organization and its financial workings, and to give their views on programming and organizational aspects. And the feedback is not only valued, but it also shapes, sometimes is re in really strong ways, the current and future program, uh, as well as other aspects of the organizations. Um, I'm going to conclude with a set of considerations on accreditation. So just to remind you, the Associates Programme, the Programme for Adult Artists, is non-accredited. Um, so it doesn't have a yeah, diploma, it doesn't have assessment, um, it's yeah, not accredited. So in an article on free, as in non-fee-paying and democratic education, the curator and theorist Irit Rogov calls for what she calls yeah, unframed knowledge. And framed knowledge uh, is, in other words, knowledge that is not framed by thematic and disciplinary orders, but is instead presented in relation to the pressures and struggles of contemporaneity. Rogoff asked two key questions. What are the institutional implications of housing knowledge that is free? And what are the economies of free that might prove an alternative to the market and outcome-based and comparison-driven economies of institutionally structured knowledge at present? That's quite a heavy question. The free and framed knowledge that um, Irid Rogoff refers to in the UK context is, I would argue, more comfortably housed in an environment that is unaccredited. Because the moment um, you set up an accreditation system, um, you have to meet a number of outcomes and targets. But having a non-accredited program uh, also opens a can of worms um, because if unframed knowledge can be personally and intellectually fulfilling, its professional usefulness is however much less certain, which begs the following question. Who can genuinely afford to unlearn without a diploma at the end of the journey? Those with time in their hands, those who already have a valid qualification, those with non-vocational aspirations, or those with the determination to learn and grow outside of the establishment, which is a choice uh, which not everyone can make. Discussions on whether or not to accredit the associates program took place on a very regular basis for the first three years of Open School East. Um, accrediting the program would have meant drastically changing both its format and its approach. And it would have also excluded those who come to open schoolies without prior qualifications. Ultimately, the associates program is a complement to formal education. Some people even call it a residency or development opportunity. But we could say it's not, or I would say it's not an alternative to an MA program. The group and its activities are to a large extent self-organized, and much of what takes place in the program is also shared with other beneficiaries thereby constantly stretching the classroom walls, um, just to name a few of the key points of convergence between the functionings um, of Open School East and of a formal art school. I'd like to finish with a final word on the pandemic, because we can't avoid talking about it, uh, given that the symposium has been brought online for that reason, and how the pandemic has affected uh, the delivery of education, but in particular, art education. So like many other art schools, Open School East relocated its programs online during the first wave of the pandemic. And sadly, as of 
uh, next week we will be returning online as the second wave, wave is hitting the UK rather hard. So we have learned a lot along the way, not only in terms of technology, but also on how to deliver theoretical content, um, which is easy enough, that's the easy part. Um, theoretical content mentoring uh, is the easy part, but how to deliver skills oriented workshops and courses in a way that's engaging and that's not too exhausting we all um, resort I and mean, we, we all talk about you know zoom fatigue and how this is affecting also the mental health of the students and the learners um, and on that note uh, we are also learning to develop adequate responses to the increased emotional needs of all our learners uh, in this really doom moment so going online has shown a possible way forward, one in which more learners from other parts of the world or with impaired mobility could take part in the program, uh, in a program that's been largely out of reach for reasons of physical accessibility or in light of the fact that, for example, as an independent art school, we cannot provide student visas. So there's much work and reflection to do in order to develop that kind of remote learning and to kind of advance it, bring it you know, forward into the future in a more holistic way. And partnerships to put in place as well with the other art schools so that, that we can pull together resources and knowledge um, and continue to enable cross-cultural encounters at an age where traveling has been largely put on hold um, and could continue for a while. So I'm going to end here and um, thank you.